All right, hello everybody, and today we're going to be deriving the Euler reflection formula. So I've done two prerequisite videos, kind of, that you should probably check out before you watch this one. Mainly deriving the integral representation for our beta function right here, as well as this integral right here, um, which takes like an hour to evaluate um, using complex analysis. Um, and this integral will actually pop up during the proof. Um, so yeah, I've made a separate video for that, just so this actual video on the Euler reflection formula doesn't go on for like two hours. So yeah, make sure to check um, these two videos out. Um, and yeah, let's just jump straight in. So, Euler's reflection formula, what exactly does it say? It says that if you have the gamma function of x and you multiply it by the gamma function of 1 minus x, it's going to give you pi over the sine of pi times x, like so. And um, we want to prove this somehow. And um, notice right here we have the product of two gamma functions. So, um, let's actually just get rid of this right hand side for now. Notice that this product right here also appears in this formulation for the beta function. So it would be nice if we can rewrite this product of gamma functions as a beta function. And um, to make the beta function part um, be a bit more clear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 1. And um, what exactly is a 1? Well, a 1 is the same thing as gamma of 1 because gamma of 1 is 0 factorial and 0 factorial is 1. And what exactly is gamma of 1? Well, gamma of 1 is exactly gamma of 1 plus 0. But what exactly is a 0? A 0 is x minus x like so. And let's rearrange things a little bit right here because 1 plus x minus x is the exact same thing as x plus 1 minus x. So if we do that replacement right there, we have gamma of x plus 1 minus x and this whole expression on the denominator right here is exactly 1 so we haven't actually changed our original um, expression. So why exactly did I do that? Well notice we have an x right here and we have a 1 minus x and that matches up nicely with these in gammas right here and that actually matches with this formulation for the beta function because you have x and y, x plus 1 the denominator xn can call this y and we have x plus y in the denominator so we can actually rewrite this as a beta function of x and 1 minus x and um, just a quick remark right here the beta function actually only exists for x and y greater than 0 or if you take the complex case the real part of x and y greater than 0 so we're just going to deal with the real case for now so this only applies if x and y are greater than 0. And right here, we have x greater than 0, and we also have this second argument right here, which is 1 minus x. That also has to be strictly greater than 0. And in fact, if you combine these two restrictions together, if you add um, x on both sides, for example, you're going to find that x is less than 1, and x is greater than 0. So overall, x has to be um, less than 1 and greater than 0. This is the restriction for x right here in order for our beta function to exist. So we have this expression now and now we can rewrite it in terms of an integral. So if we do that we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 t. Our first um, argument is x right here so we're going to have t to the x minus 1 and then 1 minus t to the y minus 1. But why is our second argument? Right here, why is our second argument? So we're going to have 1 minus x minus 1, like so, dt. All right, and now we can rewrite this a little bit. This is the integral from 0 to 1. Um, of course, these ones will cancel out. And I'm going to rewrite um, t to the x minus 1 a little bit differently. I'm going to rewrite it as t to the x over t, because this is t to the first power right here. We're dividing the same base, so we're going to um, take the difference of its exponent. So t to the x over t, and then we're going to have um, 1 minus t to the minus x like so. And so we have a negative exponent right here, so we can kind of flip this onto the denominator. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to 1, um, t to the x over 1 minus t to the x, and we'll also have this t, so times 1 over t. You can write it like that if you want. All right, very nice. And notice here, we have something raised to a power x and something else raised to a power x. 
And whenever you have this situation right here, you can actually kind of factor out the power, not really. But what you can do is you can take this quotient right here, so t over 1 minus t, and raise it to this power. And this power kind of distributes into the quotient. And then we're going to have a multiplication by 1 over t, dt like so. All right, and now what I want to do is do a little substitution. So let's um, pick a new variable. Um, let's call it, I don't know, gamma. And we're going to let it equal to this inside right here. So gamma is equal to t over 1 minus t like so. And um, I want to simplify this a little bit, kind of separate it out a little bit. So I hope you agree with me that we can multiply this thing by negative and multiply it by negative again and it won't change anything. So what do I mean by that? We're going to have a negative minus t over 1 minus t like so. That won't change anything. And I kind of want to get this 1 on the numerator just like on the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 1 to the numerator and subtract off a 1 straight away. 1 minus t. So this, these two ones right here will cancel each other out and we're going to get back to this expression right here. So what can we do? We have a negative and then notice we can split the fraction up a little bit. We're going to split it up like this. 1 minus t over 1 minus t minus 1 over 1 minus t. And this part and this part will actually cancel out to give us 1. Then we're going to have a minus 1 over 1 minus t like so. And this is exactly negative 1 plus 1 over 1 minus t, so just multiplying those two negatives right there. So, now our gamma, we can rewrite it as this, so negative 1 plus 1 over 1 minus t. And now I want to get a kind of explicit expression for our t in terms of gamma. So, let's add 1 to both sides to start off with. So, we're going to have gamma plus 1 being equal to 1 over 1 minus t. And we can take the reciprocal on both sides. So we're going to have that 1 over gamma plus 1 is equal to 1 minus t. And now to isolate our t, that's pretty easy. We, we're going to add t on both sides and subtract this thing on both sides. To get that, our t is equal to um, 1 minus 1 over gamma plus 1 like so. So we've just found a um, expression for our t. Um, let's get rid of all of this junk right here. We don't really need it anymore. And um, now since we have this expression, we can take the derivatives on both sides to find what our dt is. So dt is the derivative of this thing right here. So we have a 1 over the gamma plus 1 differentiating that. If you just use your basic differentiation um, rules and all that, you're going to find that it's equal to 1 over gamma plus 1, but the whole thing squared, d gamma. So now um, we can pretty much substitute everything back into um, this integral right here. So now we have um, the integral, let's worry about the bounds later. Remember we said that t over 1 minus t was the gamma, so we're going to have gamma to the x. And then, um, let's see, we're going to multiply that by 1 over t. But t is exactly this thing, and um, I think I shouldn't have rubbed that out before. But uh, we can do it again here, so t is exactly, let's combine these two um, terms together. So this is gamma plus 1 over gamma plus 1. That's a 1. And then a minus a 1 over gamma plus 1. Well, we can combine these two fractions together. Positive 1 and negative 1 will cancel out, leaving you with just a gamma over gamma plus 1. So this is t right here. And to get our 1 minus t right here, we just take the reciprocal on both sides. So that means that 1 over t is gamma plus 1 over gamma. So just taking the reciprocal of this fraction right here. So gamma to the x is already done. 1 over t is gamma plus 1 over gamma. And dt right here is this expression. So 1 over gamma plus 1 squared times d gamma like so. All right, now we can get rid of all of this junk right here. So we have this new expression right now, and now we have to figure out what our bounds are. And to do that, we can just sum it into this equation right here. So plugging zero into t, we're just going to get a zero because of this t on the numerator. And if you plug one into here, one minus one is a zero. So in fact, when you take the limit, you'll find that you're going to be approaching positive infinity. So we are, now we have an improper integral of this stuff right here. Now we can clean things up a little bit. This is still the improper integral from zero to infinity. Gamma to the x 
over gamma, that's just gamma to the x minus 1. And then we have these two factors right here which can cancel, leaving us with 1 over gamma plus 1 d gamma. Alright, very nice. And notice that this expression right here, this integral, is still equivalent to everything we had from the very start right here. So let's actually um, get rid of all this. Uh, we don't need it anymore. Um, just so we can save a little bit more space. So what did we just show you right here? We just showed that all of this stuff is equal to, um, let's just put it here for now. It's equal to the integral from 0 to infinity. Let's um, rewrite this as gamma to the x minus 1 over gamma plus 1 d gamma like so. Alright, this current improper integral that we have right here. That's pretty much in the exact same form as this integral that we've evaluated in um, a previous video. And uh, if you want to know how to evaluate this integral using complex analysis, you can click right here, somewhere there, and you'll find the link, or you can see it in the link in the description. But um, notice that these, this integral is in the exact same form as this integral right here. And um, right here we have this parameter n right here, which in this case is just this x minus 1. So this x minus 1 is basically our n. And notice with this integral, um, we actually require that n is between negative 1 and 0. So n is between negative 1 and 0. And now n in this case is x minus 1. So pretty much x minus 1 is between negative 1 and 0. And in fact, if you add a 1 on all of these um, sides right here, you're going to find that 0 um, is less than x, which is less than 1. And um, that is actually really nice because it actually matches exactly with our restriction we had at the very start for our x. So that's quite nice, this thing will converge. And uh, now we can pretty much just apply this formula right here. So this is now equal to negative pi over sine, and now our n right here is x minus 1, so sine of x minus 1 times pi like so. And now let's try to manipulate this denominator a little bit. We have the sine of, let's expand this, so we have pi times x minus pi, and now we can use the um, difference, angle, angular difference formula for the sine, I think that's what it's called, whatever it's called, but so uh, yeah, it's exactly equal to sine times pi times x, cosine times the second angle, which is um, pi in this case. And then since we have a negative right here, we're going to be subtracting um, cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. And um, notice cosine of pi, pi on the unit circle is all the way on this side, so it's exactly negative 1. So this is negative 1 right here. And sine of negative pi, well, negative pi, well, that's the exact same point. The y value at this point is 0. So in fact, this whole thing just disappears off to 0. So in fact, this denominator right here is exactly negative sine of pi times x, which is really quite nice. So this thing right here is exactly negative pi over minus sine of pi times x, and the negatives will cancel out, leaving you with just pi over the sine of pi times x. So, what did we just show right here? We just showed that beta of x comma 1 minus x, that's exactly equal to um, pi over the sine of pi times x. But beta of x comma 1 minus x, that was exactly this um, expression right here, but this denominator was equal to 1 anyways. So we just showed that gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x is exactly pi over the sine of pi times x. And there you go, that is Euler's reflection formula right there. Really, really nice formula. We have a product of gammas and we have a sine popping up right here. And um, just to be clear, um, our x is strictly between 0 and 1 in order to, for this to work out nicely. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And um, yeah, up until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.